I'm Lauren Gleason. I'm a registered dietitian and board certified specialist in kidney nutrition. And in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about cheese and kidney disease. And if you like videos like this and you want me to make more, then just let me know by liking this video and subscribing to our channel on YouTube. Okay. So for many people, a life without cheese is simply unimaginable. I'm personally not one of those people, but I can take it or leave it. Um, but I do know that there are many people out there that love cheese. And if you happen to love cheese and have kidney disease, you might be wondering how you can continue to eat cheese when you have kidney disease. Um, now let's start by talking a bit about why cheese is sometimes not considered to be a kidney friendly food. There are three main problems with cheese for people who have CKD, protein, phosphorus, and sodium. Let's start with protein. It's recommended that people who have CKD and are not on dialysis follow a lower protein diet. And like most other animal proteins, the majority of cheeses are high in protein. Now that's not to say that you can never eat cheese again, but you do need to be a bit more careful with your portions as well as what else you eat in the day to make sure that you aren't getting too much protein. And if you've taken my course already, you know that one of my meal plans had two servings of cheese in it. So including cheese in the CKD diet can definitely be done. And I'll link to my course in this video description so you guys can check it out if you want. Um, we'll go through different types of cheeses shortly and show you which ones are higher and lower in protein. Um, but the second problem with cheese is that many cheeses have phosphorus additives, which are bad for cardiovascular health, especially for people with kidney disease. Phosphorus helps cheese melt better and have a creamier texture. Um, if we look at the ingredient list of American cheese, we can see that it contains two phosphorus additives. Um, although the phosphorus content is not listed on the label itself, we do actually have good data on phosphorus content of American cheese, thanks to the USDA. This particular brand of cheese has about 194 milligrams of phosphorus per slice. That's 20% of your daily phosphorus limit in a tiny piece of cheese. Um, when shopping for cheese to include in your CK diet, you will definitely want to look for one that has no phosphorus additives. Um, now third, let's talk about sodium. Um, the majority of cheeses have a ton of salt added to them. When you're looking for kidney friendly foods, we ideally aim for foods to have fewer milligrams of sodium than calories. Um, take a look at this nutrition label for some American cheese. Each slice has 240 milligrams of sodium, but only 60 calories. That is four times as much sodium than calories. That is really high. Um, so we need to be mindful of the protein, phosphorus, and sodium content of cheese when choosing to incorporate them into our meals. What about the calcium in cheese? If you've found a low sodium, no phosphorus additive cheese that you like, do you need to be concerned about the calcium? And my answer to that is maybe. If you have high calcium levels, then you may need to keep an eye on how much calcium you consume. My first recommendation would be to gather up all your medications and your supplements um, that you take and ask your dietitian or doctor if those could be causing your high calcium levels. More often than not, you're probably taking something that has a lot of calcium in it. Um, if it's a medication, they may be able to switch you to something that has no calcium in it. If it's a supplement, they may recommend that you stop taking it. Um, and if there are no medications or supplements causing your high calcium levels, then you may need to take a look at what you're eating. Um, one or two servings of low sodium, no phosphorus added to cheese per day is probably fine. If you're eating a lot of dairy foods, then you may need to cut back. Um, there may also be other foods that you're eating that are causing the high calcium levels. For example, many cereals and milk substitutes contain a lot of calcium. If your calcium levels are low or within range, then you only need to focus on the sodium and phosphorus content of your cheese um, and protein if you've got CKD and you're not on dialysis. So how can you find kidney friendly cheese? Well, step one is to read the food label. You wanna find a cheese with no phosphorus additives. Also, avoid singles and American cheese. You know, I really try not to tell people to avoid specific foods. Um, I like to think that I can fit anything into a kidney diet if people really want me to fit it in there. Um, but cheese singles and American cheese are just so terrible for you. And I'm not even talking about just people with kidney disease. I really think that everybody should avoid these. Um, they're just that bad. These are just the worst type of cheese you can eat. Um, they're always, they're loaded with phosphorus, they're loaded with sodium, and they're just much better alternatives out there for sliced cheese. Um, avoid reduced fat or fat-free cheese. In my experience, these are gonna be higher in sodium and they're gonna contain phosphorus additives as well as have a higher percent of protein. Um, not to mention, they usually just don't taste as good as real cheese. 
offset the sodium with lower sodium choices in your day. It's gonna be hard to find a low sodium cheese. There's gonna be a few out there, but most cheeses are gonna be considered high sodium foods. And if you're following the strategies in my course, you will most likely have some extra salt in your day that you can spend on high sodium foods like cheese. Um, also, be sure the protein fits into your daily goals, which is mostly aimed at people who have CKD and are not on dialysis. Um, since most cheeses are higher in protein, you'll typically only be able to squeeze one or two maybe servings into your day with some careful planning. Now, let's talk about the different types of cheese now, and I'm gonna go in order of lowest to highest protein. First up, we have cream cheese. Of all the cheeses, full fat cream cheese comes in with the lowest protein at only 8% protein. Uh, many, cream cheese, many cream cheeses contain phosphorus additive though, so be careful and look at the ingredient list before choosing one. Um, Philadelphia cream cheese has only two grams of protein per 100 calorie serving, and the sodium's also not too high at 110 milligrams per serving. The next lowest protein cheese is really not that low protein at all. Um, whole milk ricotta is 20% protein. It's got five grams of protein per 100 calorie serving. So you would need to be pairing this with foods that are very low in protein, such as fruit, to offset the relatively high amount of protein in this cheese. Um, if you're gonna be using ricotta, always buy the whole milk version and check for phosphorus additives. This Happy Belly ricotta has only 70 milligrams of sodium. So while it is high in protein, at least it isn't high in sodium too. Uh, next, we've got goat cheese. Goat cheese comes in at 20% protein with four grams of protein per 80 calories. This goat cheese from Whole Foods is considered a low sodium food. It's got only 80 milligrams of sodium per serving. Feta cheese comes in at a little over 21% protein. So this would be a high protein food for someone with chronic kidney disease, but it's still something that we can work into daily meals if that's something you wanna do. Most feta cheeses will also be high in sodium. So be sure you're offsetting both the protein and the sodium with foods that are lower in protein and sodium. Um, we actually have a recipe for a delicious kidney friendly Greek salad with feta cheese on our website if you want to see an example of how we were able to balance out the sodium and protein to have a nice low sodium and low protein meal that includes feta cheese. Next we've got cheddar cheese which is approximately 23% protein and typically high in sodium. Um, again, there's always ways to fit these into your diet, we just need to use moderation. Uh, next, we've got cotija cheese. That's 24% protein with six grams of protein per 100 calorie serving. Um, while this is a higher protein and high sodium cheese, when used in moderation, it can be enjoyed on the CKD diet. Um, for example, we have a cotija avocado rice pilaf that includes a full serving of cotija cheese, and it is delicious. Um, blue cheese is about 25% protein and high in sodium. A great way to get the taste of blue cheese without too much protein is by using a blue cheese dressing, such as this Toby's blue cheese dressing. It only has one gram of protein per 160 calories, and it's just a little bit high in sodium with 210 milligrams. That's easily something that we could probably balance out over the course of the day. Brie cheese is 25% protein and higher in sodium. Many brie cheeses contain phosphorus additives, so if you choose to include brie cheese in your meals, just be sure that you are reading those ingredient lists very carefully. Um, Swiss cheese is a little over 27% protein, which means it is a higher protein cheese, but the best thing about Swiss cheese is that it's naturally low in sodium, so any brand that you choose to buy will probably be considered a low sodium food. Um, just avoid the Swiss singles that are wrapped like American cheese because um, these are going to be higher in sodium and they're probably going to contain phosphorus additives. Uh, then we've got Parmesan cheese. Parmesan cheese is 30% protein and it's usually pretty high in sodium. Um, fortunately, a little Parmesan cheese goes a long way, so you don't have to use very much. And then last but not least, we've got mozzarella cheese. Uh, all types of mozzarella cheese will be high in protein. The whole milk mozzarella is about 31% protein um, and it's going to be higher in sodium. They do make low sodium versions of mozzarella cheese, but I personally find that just using less of the regular stuff is more enjoyable because the low sodium cheese just doesn't taste that great. Um, and then that wraps up all of our cheese. So I'll include a link to this webpage in the description of this video. Um, I'll also include a link to our CKD course if you want more in-depth information on how uh, nutrition can help you preserve your kidney function. And if you want me to make more videos like this, please let me know by liking this video and subscribing to our channel on YouTube. Thanks.